as we continue along here. And uh, Colin, I, I forgot who we have on right now, so let's Patricia just... Patricia Rucker. Patricia Rucker, we have Senator Rucker. Excellent. Okay. Senator Rucker, good morning. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Good morning. Well, this was a heavyweight battle, and one of the marquee races certainly around the eastern panhandle, maybe even the whole entire state of West Virginia, and you found a way to get it done. To what do you attribute your success last night? Well, I will tell you, um, I'm really grateful for all the support, all the, you know, sort of helping, volunteering, supportive, putting signs out, donating. Um, but as you know, um, the door-to-door, I think, is just crucial, especially when you have a negative campaign with people mudslinging and making false accusations like happened in this race. Is that right, Patricia? I, I'm not in your district, so I do not get all that information. I thought it was a fairly clean race between the two of you, but obviously no, it's not the case. I'm afraid I'm afraid not. It, um, over $200,000, a couple of packs just saying the most ridiculous things. And uh, I'm really grateful that the voters once again saw through it. It wasn't successful and rejected that type of campaign. But, yeah, it was very unfortunate. This is John. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. Did you have a sense it was tipping your way, or was it a nail-biter for you to, to the very end? <laughs> it was a nail-biter. I never take anything for granted, and I always, always campaign as if I'm behind. Patricia, do you take some satisfaction from not just your victory, but the defeat of Senate President Craig Blair? You challenged him for the Senate presidency. Uh, afterwards, whether it was coincidence or not, you lost your education uh, chair position or sometime around that time. Uh, many people well, suspected that Paul Espinosa was handpicked by Senator Blair to run against you to try to uh, get you out of the Senate in, in, in entirely. I will tell you that um, it was never personal when I decided to run against the Senate president. As you guys know, I was on your show talking about it. I feel I felt that there was other ways um, that we could uh, demonstrate leadership and lead the Senate. I felt that there were, you know, things that just could have been improved upon. And I tried to work with um, Senator Craig Blair. I was honored to be part of his leadership team for two years. But unfortunately, um, did not did not see eye to eye on some things. Having said that, I, I I've always wished him the best and for him to be successful because the success of the Senate president is successful in West Virginia. Um, it has been very frustrating to see that um, some people that took did take it personally felt threatened and could not handle disagreement. Um, but, you know, I have to tell you, I have had great relationships with tons of legislators that I disagree with um, and continue to be friends with. I don't have to see eye to eye with someone in order to respect them and listen and learn from them. But, you know, also express my viewpoint. Um, I really my goal when I ran for Senate president was to make certain that the Senate maintained its upper house feel. So one of the things about the Senate that has been different from the House of Delegates in West Virginia is we try to have our discussions, um, you know, be a lot more regulated and moderate and, and you know, treat each other with respect and courtesy on the floor. I did not like to see that that was being um, changed and that there was a lot of um, attacks and, and personal uh, things being brought up, and it's just not statement-like, and I really, really wanted to return to that. So, you know, for me, it was just a question of, of feeling that I could do a good job of bringing people together, disagreeing, but not letting it become personal, and, and managing things so that, you know, at the end of the day, it's about what's best for West Virginia. Um, I, I do still hope and am and, and very grateful for all the service that you know, the Senate president has done and hope that we can continue to be friends um, as we move forward. I just really want to see us really do great things. For now, what they're doing. Patricia, the flip side of what I just said uh, is that there are those who also say you've worked aggressively behind the scenes to try to find candidates that could defeat Republicans that you don't necessarily agree with. And, and some say that you put up candidates to run against Craig Blair, uh, Jason Barrett, uh, that you've worked behind the scenes to do that 
so while it's been done to you, they say you've done it back. Any truth to that? No, it's not true. Those folks are just taking advantage of um, circumstances. You know, I did help to recruit or, I guess, support Renee uh, Weebly when she ran for that other seat, but that was before Jason Barrett had announced and before I knew he was running. So it had nothing to do against Jason Barrett, and he knew that. I told him that. He know he knew, you know, that I had. I was always truthful and honest about it. And in terms of recruiting candidates and working to get, you know, rid of folks, I actually have not ever done that. I have talked to people who come to me who are interested in running, and. I do that with anyone and everyone. And you can, I could give you a list of people who, both Democrat and Republican, who reach out to me and say, hey, we're interested in running for office. Would you be willing to meet with me and talk to me about how you did it? And I will do that with just about anyone who reaches out. I actually, I, I don't even care whether they agree with me politically or not, because to me, it's wonderful to see new faces people interested in running, and I remember what it was like when I first decided to run and just having that mentorship and help and someone answering questions. Um, you may remember I was Tea Party president, and during those years of being Tea Party president, I ran how to run for public office workshops and just feel it's really important for folks to get involved, and that's how we get, um, you know, more good people in office. Patricia, when you look at the list of winners from last night, do you, uh, certainly Tom Willis among them, he's, he's certainly pretty far to the right. When you look at the list of winners, do, did the Senate take a, a, a step to the right last night? Um, I haven't looked at every single race, to be honest. I was so hyper-focused on my own. But I do think that there were some victories for those who are more conservative, but there was also some losses, um, like Senator Robert Carnes. So it's, I, I would have to analyze every single race, which I have not done, to really know whether it, it, it changed too much dramatically. Yeah, that was my point. Have you, have you talked to uh, Bob Carnes uh, since his loss last night? Yes, I did give him a call, of course, and uh, chatted with him. And he's actually in real good spirits, um, definitely, you know, feels that, the will of the voters is, is what it is, and, and he's looking forward to other ways of helping the state of West Virginia. Patricia, congratulations last night once again, and continued success. We appreciate your access this morning. <laughs>